I got it, here it is. This is what we call the key to improving as a programmer. I'm gonna be selling these for $5. What you do is you plug it into your computer, right into the USB slot, really not sure where I'm going with the story, but in terms of the actual key to improving as a programmer, it's fairly straightforward, is that you need to do it every day, or at least most days. Treat it like you're going to baseball practice or something. When you go once a week, one hour, maybe two hours, you're not gonna get as good as those people who are playing high school ball going every single day after school, sometimes even doing two a days. There's a reason for that. Those people are doing it consistently, one, two, three hours every single day, five days a week, seven days a week, what have you, and you're only doing it one day a week for maybe one hour. The more consistently you do something well, the better you'll get. It doesn't matter if you're the starting pitcher or they just stick you over in right field because you need to get some play time. Basically what I'm saying is you need to pick a schedule, something that works for you, three, four, seven days a week, and do coding or some type of software development. Doesn't matter if you're trying to fix a bug or you're just watching a few videos that you can later apply in the, in the following days for one hour a day. That, my friends, is the key to improving as a programmer. But depending on your skill level, depends on how exactly you go about this. For beginners, find a course online that interests you, excites you, and stick to it. Buy a course on Udemy or Skillshare or Coursera and stick to that curriculum. The reason I say buy is because when you put money up, you take things a little bit more seriously than if something's just handed to you. I mean, there are plenty of good free courses out there, and if you can find the discipline in yourself to follow that course every single day or whatever schedule you set up for yourself, then go ahead. But for a lot of us, if you put up $20, $10, $100 for a course, it's more likely that you will finish it because that gives you the extra motivation, the extra discipline, because you're like, well, I kind of already invested $50 into this thing. I should probably see it through. And if you do buy a course at any of those places, use my affiliate link down in the description. I have affiliates with all of them. They're always down in the description. You'll see them, you'll see them. Or like I said, get a free course if you can't afford it, because plenty of us can't. But if you're a computer science student, if you do coding classes in your computer science courses, well, then there you go. That is already a structure, and that actually holds you accountable. Because for me, the fact that I was able to follow computer science courses, I did some online courses, and I had YouTube to hold me accountable as I shared my experiences of learning coding, those all played huge factors in helping me learn software development programming. And that's precisely why I advise you to go for a course instead of just trying to pick up tutorials here and there is because it gives you structure. For a lot of these courses for beginners, they go from the basics into actually creating different types of apps or websites or whatever course you decide to do. You're able to have a big course and they split it up into chapters and those chapters comprise of different videos and quizzes and, and homework assignments, projects if you will, programs to write and you're able to effectively uh, section off each one so you're like okay, if I'm gonna be working Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, one hour a day, you say, okay, I can do this Monday, this Tuesday, this Thursday, and this Friday. When if you're just going online, searching, you're gonna be wasting the first 15, 20 minutes of that hour figuring out what you wanna do, and then like how useful really is that if you're doing all these different things, trying to figure out, you may be doing it for 30 days in a row every single day for an hour a day, but if it's a bunch of different stuff that's not really related, it's not gonna be as effective as if you focus in on one particular discipline like iOS development and sticking with that and going through a whole entire course. Just find what works for you in terms of the course structure and things of that nature and the, and the teacher who's actually teaching it because that's a huge part for, in order for you to learn the basics of that programming language, the technologies and frameworks and IDs that they use, stick to it. If you're beyond that initial learning how to code phase, my recommendation, y'all heard me say it time and time again, is work on your own project. If you're anything like me, the big reason why you got into software development is because you had something that you wanted to create. I had all these app ideas and websites, all of which that I wanted to be able to create myself. I just love creating things, building things, changing things. That's just, that's what I love to do, creating videos, so forth. And now this is just my assumption, but I'm sure many of y'all can relate. Your reason you've gotten into this industry is because you yourself want to create that app, that program. You just want to explore into this world that not many people have explored. And at this point, you're not going to feel like a pro. You may not even feel confident in whatever programming language that you chose, but that's okay because you're gonna be learning throughout your whole entire career. So why not learn building something you've always dreamt of building? I mean, it kind of makes sense to me. The only problem is that you're staring down the barrel at an entire app. So in this case, you wanna start microtasking. You can watch a dedicated video I made on that topic right here, but to summarize it, you wanna take your entire app 
and break that down into smaller pieces. And take those pieces, if it's a social media app, those pieces will be the login screen and the feed, the activity feed and the profile. Break those down into smaller tasks and then keep on breaking it down until you have a bunch of different estimated one hour tasks. That way you can assign each task to your schedule. Four days a week, one hour per day, you have four of those tasks that you can get done in that week. And this is also a good practice of some form of agile development because the way agile development works, uh, there are different variations, but the idea is that you work in sprints. You say, all right, this is, this is the project that we wanna get done over the next week. You pull down the tasks that are related to that project and you push it all into that week and that's what you gotta get done. And there are different, uh, many different uh, tools that you will use for software development in the industry, Jira, Asana, and if that's what you wanna practice is maybe something that you could be using in the industry in a software engineering position, then go ahead and use that. For me personally, on my personal projects, how I organize my YouTube channel is I use Trello. Now Trello is owned by Atlassian, which that's who owns Jira, that's who owns Bitbucket and a lot of different software tools for software engineers. So I'd recommend taking a look at any of those. I mean, you can't really go wrong with one. Don't don't focus too much on trying to figure out which tool to use. Just, just pick one and learn it. Just, just go with it. You'll be able to learn the other tools a lot easier if you know how to use one tool, similar to programming languages. Don't get so overwhelmed, pick one, because then if you branch off, it'll be a lot easier to learn those than it did to learn that very first one. Does that make sense? Now for those people who you are very interested in software development, maybe you are already a software developer or what have you, but you don't have a particular project that you wanna work on on your own, or maybe you just want a little bit more structure that's created by someone else, similar to the learning process, and one option is to go to dailycodingproblem.com slash forest, and you can receive a daily coding problem, which is free. Their upsell is sending you the solutions to said coding problems, which when using promo code forest, you're able to get it for $8 per month and that's a daily coding problem and solution. You're paying for the solutions and that is roughly 30 solutions per month which comes out to about 26, 27 cents per solution. So it's worth checking out regardless if you don't want the solution, get the problem because that is all free. It's sent right to your email. Just click the link in the top of the description and it'll take you right there. They're just like fun little programming problems that I would see in my computer science class or just what have you. I mean, they're fun. Another option is go to a competitive programming site like uh, Hacker Rank or Top Coder. Now, I'm, I haven't been too involved in the competitive programming area, so I'm kind of uh, ignorant to that whole entire world, but I see a lot of people having a lot of fun doing that, so that could be worth checking out as well. Now, everything we've gone over is probably something you already do, but for something else. Earlier, we mentioned baseball, but for all you know, it could be for the gym, piano lessons, school, work. The only difference here is that you're the only one that's here to make you do this. You're accountable to yourself and that is it. There's not an entire team depending on you. No coaches, no piano teachers, no school teachers, no boss, no parents. It is you and you alone. And if you can't find the discipline or what people like to call motivation, you're gonna really expose you to yourself and realize that programming may not be exactly what you want to do with your life. And that's all I can really say on the topic. Just set a schedule and stick to it. It's not about motivation, it is about discipline. It doesn't matter if you're motivated to do it or not. You, it's something that you need to make sure that you gotta do. Hey, we got... I almost spilled my coffee all over here. I just spilled it a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Considering I didn't spill off uh, the whole entire cup of coffee, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. And then uh, subscribe if you like more videos like this. Now it's time to catch up with y'all a little bit. Back here, you may be able to see, this looks a little bit different. I know it's a little bit out of focus. Let's see if we can get it in focus, but you still see the same air cooler that's in there. It's been performing fairly well. I've been uh, marking some of the temperatures. But right here, that is not my brand new RTX 2060 Super. That is my five-year-old GTX 970 because my 2060 Super kind of bricked. It ended up coming with a free version of Space Invaders and decided to play it when I wasn't really trying to play it. Those artifacts that you just saw on the screen are referred to by the masses as Space Invaders type of artifacting going on. So what I have to do is send that GPU back to NVIDIA. They're gonna either fix it or send me a new one or a refurbished one or what have you. I really don't care. I just want them to send me a non-damaged RTX 2060 Super that works like a 2060 Super should. There's also something else that you may notice in the background, and that, ah, right here, 
is this is the silver YouTube play button. You get this when you cross over 100,000 subscribers. Y'all can see yourselves right there, huh? huh Let me just say that I guarantee you, far as from three years ago, just starting out this YouTube channel, hoping to get 100,000 subscribers in the next 10 years, would be incredibly proud, because I know I am, and just very grateful for everything that's happened.